From Dragon and Lion Podcast, I'm your host with the most, one more Sanchez, and joining me live on Zoom is the stand-up comedian, actor, producer. Please welcome Sunkit Alakar. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, good. I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you again for being on the show. If you can tell us a little bit about how did you get into comedy, how did you start producing your own show? Yeah, I started doing stand-up comedy like four years ago, but I come from a like a famous, my uncle's like a famous playwright in India. My dad used to act and stuff. So my mom jokes that she married into a family where full of dra dramatic people, you know. I used to do like sketch comedy, theater and stuff like that in, in college. And then four years ago, I was like, oh yeah, I, I want to get back into performing. So I started doing stand up, enjoying it really, like getting back into it. But then like when the pandemic hit, I was like, okay, stand up opportunities are like, you know, uh, not that uh, frequent because it's all either Zoom or very few outdoor shows. So I started mm -hmm. decided to write my own sketches, produce them and put my content on YouTube to have another a way of having an outlet for comedy because a lot of the ideas that I had, I was like, oh, this wouldn't work for like a stand-up bit, but this could work for a sketch. So it started so I could put all my content out there. So that's how I got into it. And I'm enjoying it so far. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what gave you the confidence to start, you know, at, before the pandemic? When did you decide? Yeah, because I always had like this, I was always like performing in college and school. Like I had that. I just, I was just like every year, I was like every year I work and I make money. I'm used to this life. So like I'm, I'm not going to perform. I'm not going to go back to performing. But then one year, my my wife was like you should just do it and i was like okay cool so like to 2018 just started going to mics doing some shows writing more writing comedy and then got a good like two two and a half years in and then the pandemic kind of made it everything different so a lot more zoom shows now a lot of video content but yeah it's so fun so i basically just pivoted into sketch comedy because like i figured like a lot of the bits that i would write like a lot of awkward situations is oh this is not going to be a great stand-up bit but this is would be something i would see on like a k and peel skit or something like that so it's like it's just a great idea to to put it on screen so that's decided to get into your writing okay so out of all the different things you do acting writing stand-up which one do you find most fulfilling i would say writing like writing whether it's like writing jokes or whether it's writing like sketches i think e either way it's like fulfilling because like it's everything starts with like a stupid idea it'd be it's, it's like oh it'd be funny if the janitor closed the bathroom as i was going in one of my sketches based off of that and it start everything starts with a stupid idea and you work work your way into making it like a real joke whether it's like a sketch or whether it's like a stand-up joke i feel like that process when you take something from 10% of an idea to 100% when it's like a real joke, like that really, it, it's the most satisfying thing I would say. Now, I speak to a lot of comedians and they say the hardest part is whenever you're doing open mic, given the opportunities and going to different uh, locations. How has that pandemic been for you? And how were you able to adjust it? How has that changed? Yeah, that's a great question. Initially, obviously, Zoom's not the same as a live show, right? Because you don't see everybody, you don't hear them at the same time. A lot of people got their mic off, their video off. So it's not a great atmosphere, but it's actually interesting because there are some good things about it too, because you're not limited by geography. You can do, I, I did like a British show once with like British people. It was fun. I also incorporated like some audio visual things. Like I did a PowerPoint set where like I was doing like presentations, like vi like pie, funny pie charts and shit. shit. So it's like uh -huh. you adapt to it whenever you're like forced to do like this pandemic was crazy and forced to do some other stuff, adapt. Cause it's okay. If this is a, if this is virtual, I can use. The computer to do some like cool stuff that i wouldn't be able to do live initially I, we all comedians were like oh man zoom's like hard it's bad yeah it's not as great as like performing live but it's there's still you can always like make it make it different be unique try to put yourself out there by using the format and like doing something more visual perhaps now you show that you have this the sunken show is there any plans to add more so yeah that i am i'm writing all the time like i'm writing sketches all the time i want to actually have more sketches than i can make but because i'm like bootstrapping like doing all this myself obviously there's a limit on what i want to only make the best stuff but i'm actually gonna launch a, a fundraising campaign soon so people can if they like me my fans can donate and then that will help me offset some of the production costs because i pay everybody the wh whether it's the editor the crew the actor everybody i like, know on principle i don't want anybody to like work yeah. for me except my, my sister i didn't pay her but every, everybody i want to make sure they're like fairly paid so just really trying to raise some money to offset the costs because i want to keep doing it but then to keep doing mm -hmm. it, it's unsustainable if you're just constantly just putting your own money into it. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you're facing right now? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge, to be honest, is like 
internal like it's from within it's you got to be disciplined man you gotta it's so easy to when because i quit my job to do this whole time like four four or five months ago and it's so easy to wake up mm -hmm. and not do anything till like lunch and then you've lost half the day and then you gotta have discipline you gotta you gotta i i gotta set myself like daily weekly goals so like i would say it's weird. One would think it's the challenging thing is to put yourself out there or make sure your content's good. Obviously that's a big challenge, but I feel like it's like self-discipline is like hard, man. It's like, you gotta make sure every day you're giving it a hundred percent. You can't like, just like slack off one day or something like that. What recommendation someone that is trying to start their own show, produce their own show that you wish you knew back then, what would you give that person just to leg up on? Yeah, I, I would say depending on what, what you're trying to do, it's like these days, I would say whatever content you put out there, especially like sketch comedy, like uh, people like judge your production quality, they're going to be harsh on it. So if your production quality is not good, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to work. So whatever you do, even if you're like cutting costs or whatever, don't compromise on that quality. I would say that there were some points where I almost ended up, you know, compromising on the quality, but it was like, oh, maybe I'll get an another editor or get some, someone cheaper, but it's, it's hard, man. You gotta, you gotta put your best foot forward. Cause like people, you, you put three months of work into these sketches and then you put them out there and then some random idiot 3000 miles from here you watch it on their phone and be like eh, that's okay it's so that's the thing you got to put your best foot forward because people they have so many things to pay attention to there's like so many special there's a lot of shit to watch on netflix you got to be the thing they want to watch so that's good that's definitely some good advice the show for those that are not familiar with it is it different like every skit or do you, is it a storyline based yeah, so it's not a storyline based. It's, it's like a sketch show. So every, it's like every episode is its own thing. It's like its own sketch, like Black Mirror, except it's not like horror or whatever. It's like every episode is completely separate. One, one of the things is it's about this guy getting into an ego battle with a janitor in his office. Then another one's about like a law and order style of police negotiation. And another one's about this just two friends getting into an argument and then Hitler shows up, which if you want to know what that's about, just go watch it. But basically it's like things, it's like concepts and ideas that I found funny, or like just created these individual bits. But based on your question though, to, to, to talk more about that, I'm going to actually, there might be some more callbacks and references to previous episodes here and there. So you might see like its own little like universe forming in like the future sketches. Yeah. With some of the sketches that you do and with the world being so sensitive, are you having to work around what you intentionally want to do? Or do you just say, you know what, I'm just going to go with it because this is my vision and this is what I, I intend to do. Oh man, I have so many views on this. How much time do you have? Hey man, this open mic. Go All ahead. Right. So it sounds cliche, but the first thing I would say is it's gotta be funny, right? Whatever you write, forget sensitive, right? If what you're writing, you don't, if I don't think it's funny, if what I'm writing, I don't think it's funny, it's, I'm not even gonna go ahead with it, whether it's potentially offensive or not. So first thing, it's gotta be funny. Second thing is just don't be a dick to people. Don't be an asshole. You can, comedy is meant to make fun of the uncomfortable things, right? We, we all gotta accept in the world that we make fun of like dark topics and we, we talk about things that we normally don't. And that's what, what we get the humor from. But the, the flip side to that too, is if people aren't consistently finding your shit funny, right? It's not because the people suck. Maybe you need to redo your shit stuff. So I think it's less about having to change your stuff for the sensitive world, but it's more like, just know your audience. If, if you're going to be doing a show in front of 50 grandmas, don't maybe not do all your dick jokes. So that's all. <laughs> that's well said. I appreciate it. Cause I think many stand-up comedians that I've spoken to, they are not straying away from their material. Cause at the end of the day, it's basically saying I'm not, I'm losing myself if I have to change and to adjust so to hear that's still happening with everyone on the same page it's good because i think tv portrays it like with other who have endorsements they're like hey, i don't know but i think that's just because that's what their pr people are telling them what yeah, to do so yeah real, real quick sunky before i let you go i'm gonna put you on the spot quick questions quick answers okay all right in your career so far what's your most memorable moment oh i would say there was one time i was on a show where mark norman and i were on the same lineup and Martin Norman really funny. I felt really honored to be on the same. It was like, it was like super when I just started doing stand up. Given the opportunity to do a uh, special, what would you want to record it? Huh? I think, no, I think I was thinking about it. Like, I've actually thought about this. It's like, I, so I was born in the Bay area. I was born in, in Mountain View and I lived in San Jose for my, the first seven years of my life. But I feel like I never really spent that much time there because I've lived in Pittsburgh. I've lived in New York for, for a long time, but I kind of, it's kind of, if I do a special go back full circle to where you came from. And then if a movie were to be played about your life, who would play you? Oh, a movie, huh? First of all, I think any movie that's made about my life would be like, like this 
experimental shit where like the time just loops again and again it's like these guys <laughs> doing the same shit every day and then like suddenly he's like lazy and shit and then one one day out of 14 he like does something good if i had to pick someone to play myself i'd pick someone cool i think michael b jordan's pretty cool the villain from black panther he's pretty cool i'm not black he's not indian but sure we, we do race bending these days hey, can they, hey how would you want people to portray your comedy and your show what's the one thing that you want the viewers to look at when they're going into the sunken show or going into one of your shows i think one thing that i would love for people to come away with when they like watch my comedy or watch my sketches huh i didn't think of it that way uh, and i feel like you know if, if people they come away with watching my stuff oh this this was funny i never thought about that that way before i think that's good absolutely was there any questions or anything that i didn't answer that you want the people to know yeah i just wanted to say again season two of the sunken show it's we're going to be shooting uh, next month we're going to be putting out six more sketches this time and i'll be doing a fundraising campaign soon people i just encourage people to go check it out uh check out my show they like it they can donate where can they find you instagram yeah right there <laughs> instagram youtube or whatever you can also venmo me as much money as you want it's right here all right second man i appreciate it we'll keep in touch yeah thanks man hey, thank you you have a good one thanks for having me